use examples to understand cross-site scripting better. In the diagram here, we have a typical application running on an application server sitting behind a web server. Let's say that a user visits a watering hole, maybe some kind of forum or post where they pick up a bad JavaScript. Could also be that they get a phishing email that has a malicious link embedded inside. In either case, there's gonna be a malicious script that's already there that the user is picking up. So in a sense, we can kind of say the user is infecting themselves in a way. They're not aware that they're stumbling across a malicious link or a malicious post, but they're actually picking up the infection, the evil JavaScript, and that's getting submitted to the vulnerable application. That request goes to the web server and eventually ends up at the application. At this point, the application takes that malicious script as input and uses it to create the page that's going to get sent back to the user. So now the page has that malicious script embedded inside and it's heading back towards the user's browser. So the malicious page gets back to the user's browser and that's when finally the JavaScript is seen by the JavaScript engine in the browser and it's executed. We do a demo to show how this works. So we'll use the echo page inside of Matilda. And normally we would have a link that would have the JavaScript in it, but just for the sake of illustration, let's hand type the malicious JavaScript into the field so we can watch what happens. So we'll use a typical script tag instead of doing HTML injection or some other example, but there's lots of different types of scripts that can be injected and it doesn't have to be a script tag. And we're just gonna do an alert box. These make lousy demos in security tests, but they're good for demonstration purposes. If you're doing a security test, you're better off demonstrating with B framework or something like that so the user understands the issue. So we'll send this off to the server and we don't really appreciate what's happening because it all happened so fast, but obviously the script executed. Let's go back to our proxy burp suite and we'll take a look at those last requests and responses. So here's the request that happened. The script is embedded and gets sent in via the message parameter. The page that it got submitted to was echo.php. Let's go take a look at the source code for echo.php and find that message parameter. So the message parameter gets brought into the page and in the mode that we're operating in, it goes from the message parameter here, L message, and gets transferred into the message text. So now we'll follow the message text. Get down here into where the output actually occurs, and we see there's a line that takes the message text and prints it out onto the screen in the report header. So the page says results for, and then it's supposed to print whatever is the content of the message text. Notice there's no output encoding. That's key because output encoding is the proper defense for cross-site scripting. So let's look for results for. And we find that right here on this line. We scroll over a little bit. We'll center that up. And what we notice is that the script did get substituted right where that message text variable was. And as we said before, without any output encoding. 
if it had been output encoded, we wouldn't have a problem. Now we go back over to the page where we saw the pop-up, and let's take a look right here on the page at the results for. And of course, we're going to see the script right after it. We already know that happened because we saw the results in Burp Suite. Here's the report results for under the report header, and there's the script that got embedded into the page. So in effect, what's happening is, is the cross-site script is being brought in as input, but it's being incorporated into the resulting page that's sent back to the user. Once the page actually makes it back to the user's browser or mobile device, that's when the browser sees the embedded JavaScript and executes it. By encoding the output, the output would be rendered harmless. So the browser would have simply displayed it on the page. We can emulate that in Matilda Day. What we'll do is we'll toggle the security level and we'll go to level five. And then we're gonna replay the script that we had before. We'll have to make some adjustments because this page has other defenses. So one thing we're going to do is make the size of the field big enough to hold the, the input. And we can do that here in the browser. And we also need to turn off the JavaScript form validation. We'll do that by deleting the on submit. And sure enough, by encoding the output, no harm is done. The browser realizes that the input is just data and should not be executed, so it doesn't execute it. That's essentially how output encoding works. It removes all that ambiguity. The browser doesn't get confused about whether the input should be treated as data or should be executed as code. Output encoded output is always treated as data. It's never executed thus making the page safe from cross-site scripting.